the first thing I, I want to, to ask you is what is anonymization? In a, in a formal definition, uh, we can say that is when we modify a data set to avoid uh, any identification while remaining suitable for testing, data analysis, or da and data processing. Uh, but here, some people made some mistakes because uh, people think that just replacing fields like name from a table is enough for that, and it, it is not true. We need to do more, uh, more treatment on the data. Uh, some people use views modified uh, when you create a view replacing the, the, the user name or the partner name, for example, uh, to obfuscate real data for testing servers. This is quite good. I, it does the work, but uh, for legal purposes, this is not enough. Uh, another kind uh, of anonymization that you can do is a permanent alteration when you do not create a view but do a direct update on your record uh, and we use it for development. Here is what, uh, was, uh, what I, I was saying. It looked like so easy. Oh, yes, I can replace my information and uh, I get uh, anonymized data. But we can get a singling out. What is a singling out? It's when we can look into a data set and we can uh, understand some uh, subject from, from that. And this is really complex. A uh, completely useless data set for me may be uh, really precious for you because we are talking about different uh, business rules. And so is a, a work that takes a long time to get in a, a ready to production stage. Uh, linkability is another uh, pit that people uh, often fall because uh, when you can in intersect to different uh, data sets and you get useful information and you can I identify some person. And indirect in identifiers. Uh, here, if you don't have my ID number and you don't have my name, but you have my gender, you have my postal code, and you have my date of birth, maybe this can be really important for some companies. Uh, and so we think need to take care about that. <laughs> I, I say to, to my teammates that it is a cat and mouse game because Every day I discover uh, a new way to, to get people uh, identified from, from a new field of the system. And as IDMPR have a, a really well relational database, this is more challenger. <coughs> uh, so why I, I'm talking about that and what <laughs> this, uh, why we need it? it? In Brazil recently, uh, the government approved a new law uh, about the general uh, and personal data protection. It's based on European uh, GPDR. Uh, it will become valid in Brazil just on next year, but we are was scared. Now we uh, already find some ways to, to do the right thing. Uh, the, the most important case that we have about that is one of our customers that manages more than 700,000 collection con contracts from a bank. So we have a lot of personal data that is strictly confidential. Uh, so the, the first step that when we, uh, we was reading the, the LGPD is, okay, we need to remove the all the personal data, all the links, and all the ways to identify some person from our database, mainly on development environment, in our case. Uh, so, <coughs> I, in the past, I already had some scripts to, to shuffle uh, some records on database, but when I, I faced this challenge, uh, I started to study 
some, some more about the subject, and I discovered some common strategies on the database world. Uh, this applies not only to Postgres, but uh, on data modeling in general. Uh, the sampling, I, I will talk just a little about uh, each one. Uh, this will be available after the conference. But the sampling uh, is not about obfuscation or anonymization. You pick up just a part of your data set to work but uh, it implements uh, the data minimization from a GPD and GPDR. Uh, it's like you, when you do a select from CB Partner, uh, passing a parameter you, and using table sample feature from Postgres. Uh, when you need to keep the referential integrity, it's better you take a look into PG sample, P PG sample. Suppression. Uh, this is useless for testing because you have a completely broken data set. Uh, it's basically when you suppress the data. Update CV partner and setting name it to new. But this is, if you have a constraint not new, your data will be completely broken. Random substitution. Uh, when you use some function like MD5 uh, and create a random text this don't break constraint, but you have a completely crazy data set. You look and uh, what is this? <laughs> uh, adding noise. Of course, this will only work for dates and numeric. You don't have how to, to add some noise to a text. Um, here we created a, a random instruction to increase or decrease in 30% uh, credit limit from a B partner. Encryption, following the, the same idea, uh, as you can see, each strategy, you have some good points and bad points. And the, the deal here, I, I will finish to, to talk about then, and I, I will talk about the, the, the deal. Shuffling, uh, shuffling in our case is one of uh, I most use because don't break uh, foreign keys and you get a completely uh, mixed data set that you can uh, put for your developers to work and you have no problems with loss. Faking, you need to write complex function and partial suppression. <coughs> uh, here is my, my phone. When you do a partial suppression, you get something like this string. So, <coughs> As I was say, as I was saying before, uh, just single updates is not enough to implement what legislation needs. We need to do a mix of all these techniques and identif identifying the different columns on database to get a, a data set that makes sense for your purpose, even for development, for CI, for analysis. Um, and that Im implements what the GPDR and LGPD needs. Uh, for the same data set, to do that, you might need to use different strategies. Uh, and that is what we do in DevCoff. It's really, really complex. The, the, the most difficult part is to do a, a, a mapping from all our database and say, ah, this column I will shuffle, this column. I will just uh, uh, encrypt graph by this way. So, as a developer, when I look and understand all the things that I said to you, uh, my idea, my first idea is I, I will write a script. I can do that. It's quite easy, and there is no problem on doing it. But when looking on the internet, we find several tools writing in Ruby, Jailer, that is Java, Talion, or my first idea, a bash script to do the job. <laughs> but it takes a long time and is a, a, a long job. Uh, not, it's not what I uh, want. I want to use a, a common market solution. That, that's the idea. So I found the Postgres anonymizer extension. 
that is our choice. <laughs> the Postgres Anonymizer extension is a really simple extension that you can write DDL code and you can keep all your definition of uh, anonymization inside your database with comments, in, comments instructions. So it's quite simple to, to understand, to maintain, and to teach other persons from your, for, from your team to, to, to keep the, the, the job. Uh, the, this extension, you can do three different things that is really precious, in my, in my opinion. Uh, you can do anonymous dumps that is we use it on our solution. We have production environments. From production environments, we uh, have backup environments. From these backup environments, we insert the instruction for anonymize, anonymize the data. And from this backup environment, we uh, make available for our developers databases with <coughs> data shuffled and cryptographed and so on. Uh, another useful feature from Postgres Anonymizer is the in-place anonymization. Uh, we can use that, for example, for legacy data in production servers. Uh, every I want to uh, change values from customers that don't buy anything in the last five years from, from us, just to keep it keep the, the, the information there, but use this data. This is a, a, a good application for that. And the dynamic messaging, this is uh, useful for consultants that need to do some analytics uh, on customer database, but don't, uh, they cannot have permission to view personal data information. This is done on the fly and don't change the, the data in the data in the tables. <clears throat> uh, here is a simple example uh, of how we can declare the masking rules. You just need to load uh, the, the extension on database. Here is an example of creating a table. You don't need that. And you define a security label uh, for a user. And here you can do a trick, creating different users and creating different levels of uh, and the, the, the main point, as I said, uh, is that using DDL for, for keeping this secure. Um, and it's quite easy uh, for, for people that already use it, uh, both with instructions. There is no, no uh, no challenges, challenges other than defining which you uh, want to do. Uh, one limit that we face is just 9.9.6 version and newest, uh, and we ha can use just only one schema with this extension. But uh, I think this will be solved fast today right? because the, the, the repository is very active. It's a French company that uh, is maintaining this station. That, that. So, another additional comment. Uh, when I try to do uh, this replacing with uh, scripts and using Java code or something like that, uh, the result uh, was so slow then compared to, uh, with the PG anonymized solution. <coughs> it's, uh, I, I, in a few minutes, I have a way to develop an environment uh, instead of other solutions. Uh, for our user case, that is a development environment. And here is what the uh, extension creator said, and I think that it fits into our community too, that free software must need the way to build a future where privacy and anonymity are available to everyone. And of course, Postgres has an important role to, to its domain because it fired the world's most dynamic and other other than you. This is Postgres. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that uh, us, as a, a very know 
ERP system in a large community uh, should think about uh, privacy because we have IoT, uh, machine learning, uh, data science, and, and every new tendency is falling back to inside an ERP. All the most important data and valuable is inside the uh, ERP. So we need to think in privacy. And that's it. Any questions? I think I was pretty short. <laughs>